Welcome to the video on the basics of support and resistance. Simply stated, support and resistance are respective price levels at which price stops going down or up. Price in any market is one at which buyers and sellers have agreed upon fair value. If more buyers think that price is fair, they will attempt to buy. This in turn raises demand and prices rise. And as prices rise, buyers become less active and sellers become more active. And at some point they balance out again and establish a new level of fair value and in this case it would be called resistance. So let's get right to the chart. And we can see in this chart of IBM starting in 2008, you can see a nice trend from bottom left to top right. But in the middle here in early 2010, IBM just flattened out and went nowhere. And you can see that over here at this price approximately 130, a little reversal and a pullback. And then approximately, it looks like 118, it found some support where buyers got active again. And if you think about it, after this rising trend, these buyers bought the dip. But something happened later. In late May, price got back up to the 130 level and stalled again. This time, it went down pretty quickly, but once again, it found support at approximately 118. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll get to this spike below this in a minute. And again, it cycled again and again and again and again and again until we see a nice trading range or rectangle pattern where in between there was lots of activity but no trend. And eventually in September, prices broke to the upside, the trend resumed, and up and away it goes. So let's deal with this spike here. If we had, this is a weekly chart, if we had looked at a tighter time frame, we might have seen this thing spike down and immediately recover. So a break below a support level, which is immediately reversed, is short-term bullish. Unfortunately, it ran into resistance again at the 130 level because it was in a trading range. And if we had looked at some indicators, such as stochastics, we probably would have seen it go high to low, high to low until finally it stayed high at the breakout. So let's move on to the next chart. So here we have a daily chart of Whole Foods markets. And as you can see, between 2013 and 2015, it had a pretty rough road. I mean, that's just an understatement. But we can still see support and resistance developing, even in a choppy chart like this. Obviously, over here around September, of 2013 it came down and bounced to set the support level big rally big decline and look at this found support once again approximately 51 where it bounced and then it failed again but again, once again the third time now finding support at 51 and over here it's starting to break down it's starting to change and there was a breakdown and a retracement so what happened was a new uh, mindset in the market took hold where what was once cheap, the support level here, now became, becomes expensive on the breakdown. And sellers who missed their first chance to get out, say in April, got a second chance later that month or in early June, and uh, uh, down it went. Um, look where it stalled before a big breakdown. And after that, obviously uh, not a good, good time for Whole Foods stock. But even after such a big collapse, you could see it developed another trading range. Um, I like to draw the line all the way back here, even though this is a violation here. But it just gives you a good flavor of a trading range where you have support, resistance, support. And look where it stopped just before the explosion to the upside. So again, a level that was established in the past, here for this example, once again acting as support. And even after a big rally and decline, once again acting as support before yet another breakdown or gap down. So even though this stock is very volatile, uh, there's one theme here in that if investors or traders think that an area is cheap, it becomes support. They buy there. Whether or not the stock is doing well, and obviously Whole Foods was not doing well fundamentally, but whether or not it's doing well, it's perception in the market that counts. Perception is reality. You've, you've heard that a lot. But it really rings true, and support and resistance levels really reflect that. And the last point I want to make is that these support and resistance levels will hold in the future. 
So an old support resistance will oftentimes become a, a good level to watch into the future. So the last, the last question to ask is why doesn't the market jump immediately from one level to the next? Um, perhaps some earnings came out or news or, or whatever it is. Why doesn't the price just jump from one price to the next and stay there? Well, you can see we do have jumps here, but you know, here's where it ended up, and it, was a, it actually was a trend. And the answer is that the information doesn't flow around the market uniformly. Everyone doesn't absorb the information at the same rate, and people don't understand the information the same way. Some people may be traders, some may be investors. So as the information of whatever change in the stock goes through the marketplace, we get the trend until such time as, of course, you know, it runs out of steam. So support and resistance, uh, very simple levels on the chart. Um, use them to gauge where the stock is and to find out where the stock may be changing or breaking down.